If you've been around the channel long enough, or you've seen like, you know, any meditation or spiritual themed movie over the last 10 years, you'll probably know that one of the most central and core themes of many new age disciplines is the seven chakra system. Whether you've used them as meditation aids or seen them in gift shops, you're probably at least somewhat familiar with the idea. If not, go and check out our videos on them to get a basic understanding, or, you know, just watch Dr. Strange and see how it turned out for him. Anyway, today's episode is kind of a philosophical what if one in that we're not going to be assessing the scientific studies of energy medicine or the empirical existence of chakras. As even we'll admit, there's a lot lacking in terms of proving alternative medicine. Instead, this time we're gonna take a more open-ended question. What would the world look like if at some point in the future, we actually found scientific evidence of the chakra system? What if we discovered a chakra in the body or all seven? And how would such a discovery affect our approach to different branches of science and philosophy. To start with, let's look real quick at how the chakra system itself came into our Western world. If you've watched our first video on chakras, you'll know that the modern new age understanding identifies them as energy centers or wheels or vortices of energy inside the body that are associated with the classical Newtonian colors. But this wasn't always the case. In fact, the first uses of the term chakra in the Vedas didn't have anything to do with energy at all. Instead, it was used to refer to the wheel of motion that a king had over his empire. Further, even though breath channels, or as they're known in Sanskrit, the nadis, are mentioned in the Upanishads around 1000 BC, Again, the chakras and energy centers aren't. Most academics tend to agree that the idea as we know it today came about during medieval India during 800 AD from Buddhist texts that showed them as hierarchies of inner energy centers. But this is still kind of debated since others make the argument that the concept of chakras was only written down during this time, but had been around for much longer. So as always, decide for yourself on what feels right. Even more interestingly, the original Indian and Buddhist concepts of the chakras don't make any reference to colors. That's a completely modern thing. A man named John Woodruff translated two classical Indian texts into English in his book, The Serpent Power, which is largely credited with the introduction of the idea of the seven chakras into the West. You've probably seen a bunch of debates about the amount of chakras, with some people saying there are three, five, six, or like in his version, seven. See, the reason seven chakras are sort of canon is because the text that Woodruff was translating into English came from a school of thought known as Kaula that believed in seven. And that was just the only version we got in English. Later on, another man named Liedbeater decided that Woodroffe's book was too hard to read and full of jargon. So he published his own, which drew comparisons with the 17th century book, The Theosophia Practica by Johann Gichel, which talked about inner force centers in the body, which were reminiscent of chakras and kind of came to mean the same thing. From that point on, the concept of chakras as inner centers of prana and life energy started to be adapted by theosophist movements and slowly made their way into the new age culture. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going off about all this history, but it sets the groundwork for the problems that arise when talking about Eastern concepts in a Western paradigm. This video was actually inspired by a section in Drumvalo's Flower of Life books, where he stated that during his time in a technology lab, his team was actually able to see extensions of the chakras in the Merkaba light body by focusing on or charging each chakra and then scanning that area with a molecular emission scanner or MES machine for short. According to Drumvalo, they originally struggled to find the chakras, but once they started scanning the light body itself, which extends outwards beyond the physical body, the scanner would light up to show that each chakra had a certain pulse attributed with it. So this really begs the question, can the chakras be measured scientifically? And what would happen if a lab one day proved their existence experimentally, as perhaps they may even already have? Now, today, of course, we have things like Kirlian photography and biophoton imaging that seemingly can photograph the human bioelectric field, which some people are likening to the aura. But even this isn't enough to convince skeptics. So what would happen if we proved the chakras in a foolproof way? Well, the first thing would probably be a complete shattering of the current paradigm of understanding. Simply put, if chakras existed, one of the most central aspects of spirituality, what else could exist from that paradigm? First off, this would lead to a complete reevaluation of what we know in fields like biology, chemistry, and physics. It's kind of like a knock-on effect. If one thing was proved, 
then it would naturally encourage the pursuit of other things, which could lead to similar things like auras, third eyes, and morphogenic fields also being proved and recognized scientifically. Maybe this would even lead to a new branch of science appearing in the mainstream curriculum, a spirit science, if you will. If such discoveries were finally taken seriously, then it would effectively eliminate the stigma between science and spirituality, allowing us to explore both concepts equally and reach untold heights of understanding and philosophy. To quote Tesla, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomenon, it will make more progress in one decade than in all of the previous centuries of its existence. But what would society look like? What advances could we make holding the knowledge of the chakra system? Probably the biggest change for us would be in healthcare and medicine. See, the chakras for the most part stem from Ayurvedic tradition of ancient India, which is a practice of healing that stems back over 5,000 years and is often considered to be the foundation of all Eastern medicine practices. Here's where we see the fundamental difference between Western and Eastern practices like we've mentioned earlier. While Western medicine follows the Hippocratic method, one that focuses on curing diseases as they appear or are already present in the body, a paradigm that is incredibly lucrative, we might add, Ayurveda is kind of the opposite in that it's a complete system of medicine that combines natural therapies with a highly personalized approach to treating disease that has the prevention of disease as its primary emphasis. So in this practice, as well as in the chakra tradition, a healthy state is defined as one in which there's a balance between body, mind, and soul in an equilibrium among the doshas or body types. If we somehow proved this system to be accurate, and could measure its effectiveness, not only would our general health as a species go up, but so too would our quality of life, harmony with ourselves and our environment, and probably most important during this trying time right now, our relationship with each other would improve. If we could use the chakra system to predict when and where diseases would strike, we could tackle the disease before it took a hold of someone, thereby saving countless lives. Just imagine, Oh look, your root chakra is showing this negative energy pattern, a common early sign of cancer. So let's focus on healing that chakra based on what's needed. Maybe nutrition, exercise, or some childhood trauma therapy and guarantee that we heal this thing before it gets worse. We could even take it further and nutritionists and sports scientists could design diets and activities specifically catered to keeping your chakras in balance or maybe even target the centers that were out of whack and we could eliminate disease altogether. Of course, having no diseases would probably put big pharma out of business, which would probably make a lot of people lose their jobs. But that $82 billion that Johnson & Johnson made last year could be invested into further research or other branches of science that could lead to even greater discoveries. Like, I don't know, anti-gravity devices or quantum teleportation. I mean, maybe we might even finally find a way to unify quantum physics and the standard model. And guess what else? If we could use the chakra system to effectively eliminate disease, that also means no more healthcare bills or debt for millions upon millions of people. But hey, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. After all, professional Ayurveda people still charge for a session, but it would be nowhere near as much. Even being conservative and saying that we could use the chakra system to complement Western medicine, it could pose a viable option for people who are allergic to certain medication or those who can't leave the house. Further, machines like the Aura Star, which is based on the sciences of biofeedback, reflexology, kinesiology, and concepts in Ayurveda medicine, can actually be used to measure biofeedback data and is way cheaper to produce than MRIs or CT scanners and could be used for similar diagnostic treatment. As a side consequence of this, it may even start to eliminate class divides with regards to access to treatment. Since the machines can be produced for much cheaper, anyone could access them. Just try and picture it. You wake up one morning and you're feeling a bit groggy or fatigued. You're suffering from low self-esteem. You grab your coat, drive to your local GP, and the doctor tells you that your solar plexus is weaker than normal and prescribes a series of meditations, foods, and exercises to help you get back to flowing normally. Heck, imagine couples or marriage counseling where people could go to therapy to work on rebalancing their throat chakra to enable better communication. What about energy itself? Following numerous new age beliefs, all living things have chakras. Since the earth itself is a living being, she too has chakras dotted around various places. What if we could somehow tap into these huge reservoirs of energy to produce a natural, renewable, and healthy source of energy that could replace the fossil fuel industry? If you watched our other videos on chakras, we pointed out that as wheels of energy, they both act as magnets for the energy around us and as channels for the universal source of energy to flow through us. 
Hmm, maybe we could even tap into our own auras or chakras to produce our own power by channeling the source field. Imagine being able to charge your phone using your solar plexus and some kind of electromagnetic induction. How cool would that be? Maybe it's a little far out there. I don't know if that's possible, but the conversation is at least worth considering. Again, this would do wonders for eliminating class divides and would also help to clean up the environment massively. I wonder if Greta would get behind that. But I guess if that happened, a lot of people would claim that the introduction of chakras to the world were a part of the Illuminati's plans to take over. And then we'd all beeline it back to drilling oil. So yeah, anyway, probably the most important aspect of our lives that would be changed by the knowledge of the chakras though, would be our understanding of emotions, personal energy, and how interconnected we really are. We've been saying this for a while now, but while all of the problems of today appear as separate incidents, they're all ultimately coming from the same source, an unbalanced spirit body, a disconnection between our egos and our souls, and the feeling of separation from each other. Knowing about the chakras would change all of that. We would finally understand which areas of our spiritual body influenced which chakras, which in turn influenced certain aspects of our physical lives. By working through the chakras together, we could effectively help to dissolve our ego as a species. We would be guided by a sense of compassion and unity rather than ruled by a fear of separation. We could set up centers for meditation and healing that would cater to each chakra imbalance and help heal each other. It might even lead to the legalization of plant medicine as a means of healing and mental well being and therapy. Conceptually, though, as we mentioned earlier, this would cause a paradigm shift that could cause scientists to examine things from an inherently more spiritual perspective, perhaps even allowing for consciousness itself to be factored into equations, leading to untold discoveries about our place in the universe and how we ourselves affect and shape reality. Ultimately, discovering a way of measuring the impact of any treatment or practice on the energy system of an individual would break ground in our current system, both in terms of healthcare and scientific thinking. Examining the combination of practices such as the chakras and other related alternative medicines in the context of how they are used in our current medical paradigm is a further step in this direction. Really, there's nothing to lose. Further scientific study into things like the bioelectric or morphogenic fields and the concept of chakras in general can only provide clearer and potentially paradigm altering results. Even from a hardcore atheistic point of view, if such things didn't exist at all, more detailed study would prove that, which would also have an impact on society as a whole and at least evolve our more philosophical understanding instead. Whatever way the coin falls, we have the potential to change society by understanding the chakra system better. So what do you think? What kind of changes would proving the chakra system scientifically bring about in your life? What do you think society would look like? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in exploring the chakras more, please come and check out the seven day transformation in which over just one week, we'll go through each of the chakras with you together and help you to clear out and transform at every level. Until next time, stay in balance and we'll see you soon.